I'd like to invite you to a fairy tale about a lovely dream I had. Switch on your imagination. Good. When I wave my wand, you too will see my dream. Here we go! I have a sensitive issue I need to discuss with the three of you. Now rest assured, whatever we say here stays here. I'm not a rabble rouser, you all know that, but lately my conscience has been nagging me to do what I believe is the right thing. To eliminate the celebration of all religious holidays from Cherokee Elementary School. Why? That'll never happen. I hope you're not pandering to some school board members. Uh-oh, gather your troops, we're going to war. Are things getting a little too dull for you here, Bob? Where's my fuzzy security blanket? How on earth can you celebrate the holidays without religion? Christmas carols, Easter egg hunts, those are beautiful childhood memories, Bob. You're talking about taking some joy out of youngsters' lives. I appreciate your candor, Laurie, I do. I specifically asked the three of you here for your honesty and fairness. Well, usually, I keep my beliefs to myself, but you asked for it. I'm an atheist. On my sabbatical, I saw unbelievable tragedies. I saw innocent children dying of abuse and neglect. They considered it God's will. Well, pardon my sarcasm, but maybe God was too busy answering the prayers of baseball teams. Did you see the papers today? A Sunday school teacher murdered a child. Where was God? At a ball game? My father's a minister and he's embarrassed that I've become a non-believer. Religious holidays are science fiction to me now. But why are you bringing this up anyway? Did something happen? I had a revelation this week. My neighbor's sweet little old lady, member of my church, ran over in a huff and said, I'll never shop at Publix again. Cashier looked at me and smiled and said, Happy Holidays. Well, I stared her right in the eye and I said, Merry Christmas to you, you infidel. And then she says, what's this world turning into? I hope your neighbor's not a member of Welcome Wagon. Makes me think I should be paying more attention uh, to what's going on in our community, more specifically, our school. Bob, that woman was way out of line in her thinking. The holidays are a time of love and good fellowship. Why can't we just follow the golden rule? Do unto others as you have them do unto you. Simplify. Uh, fortunately, to some folks that means do unto others before they stick it to you. Excuse me, but why? I mean, why should we love one another or even be particularly kind to one another only during the holidays? Isn't this something we should be doing on a daily basis? Of course. I'm just saying that some people use religion to do or say evil things, like Bob's neighbor. Like Ku Klux Klan members who would go to church every Sunday. Hey, Teach, I'm getting heartburn here. <clears throat> Flashback to my childhood. I was one of only two Jewish kids in my class growing up. The other was a girl named Elsie, whose parents would not let her sing Christmas carols, so she had to drop out of the chorus. It's a shame, too, because she was one of the only girls who could hit the high notes and stay on pitch. I was not good at sports. I loved to sing. That is, until the sixth grade. Mrs. Miller, the prototype for Cruella. She made a point at every damn rehearsal to say, Jason, stand up. Class, Jason is Jewish, which means he does not believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. Jason, if you do not wish to sing this Christmas songs with your classmates, you may be excused, you may step outside, this will not reflect upon your grades. Well, she pointed me out like a sore thumb by the use of her middle finger. Despite her efforts, I did not quit the chorus. But because of her, I became the target for bullies throughout high school. Well, didn't your parents complain? If my children were singled out like that, I would have. Well, things were a little different back then. Back then, teachers and doctors were like gods to our parents. I mean, if I made a fuss, I was the troublemaker. It's bad enough that my dad had to put up with the bigotry and hatred at work every day, but if I, 
if I said something like that, I would just be adding to the family burden. Every year, day after Thanksgiving, I wish I could just fast forward my life straight to January. I think it's a fact that most Jews in this country feel like second class citizens. We don't want to upset the apple cart. It's like we're, we're looking through a window of this nice store at all these goodies. Now sometimes we're asked to come in and partake, but uh, we're not really entitled, only as guests. Please, Jason. Every year I invite my friends over to look at my Christmas tree and exchange gifts. Few of them are Jewish. I don't think they feel that way. Well, I can't speak for your friends. We all do what we can to survive. For me, it's humor. You ever notice how many Jews are comedians? It's our built-in self-defense mechanism. What exactly are you recruiting us for, Bob? One. I love traditions, uplifting traditions, that kids can reflect upon happily for the rest of their lives. Two, I'm finally beginning to understand why this is such a controversial subject. The youngsters going to school and having to celebrate religious holidays is a form of bullying. And three, now let me just say, I agree, it's important to study uh, religious holidays around the world, but it's cultural and educational. But not just to select few religions. So, we have students from over a dozen or more religions and nationalities, and I don't want a single kid to be left behind. I agree with you there. Religious kids will be celebrating the holidays with or without school. Religious training should start at the home. Our main focus at school should be reading, writing, arithmetic, and learning how to be a responsible member of a society. Amen. Old habit. How do you plan on making this change in policy? I'll tell you soon, but first, without mentioning any names, has anyone experienced bigotry here from the staff? I had an incident a few weeks back. You know, just because my name ends in a vowel, people think I'm Italian. Well, I'd gone into the teacher's lounge, and in the midst of a very lively discussion, after a brief moment of silence, the teacher in question looks at me and he says, your name is Moreno, isn't it? Well, uh, I had my feelers up and I said, yes, but it's deceiving. And failing to take my cue, he proceeds to tell a very insulting Jewish joke. And before the laughter erupts, I gather my courage and say, I'm Jewish. Well, you could have cut the silence with a knife. At least you get to know who your enemy is. Sometimes jokes and conversations come to an abrupt stop when I walk into the teacher's lounge. I'm sorry to hear this. It shouldn't be happening, especially here. Well, <coughs> allergies. <laughs> I propose that we show our appreciation and respect for Mother Nature at our school. We'll celebrate the four seasons of the year and, and we'll start with fall. The beginning of the school year, of course, the, the band and the chorus can play things like I'm a Little Acorn Brown, you know, fun tunes you can find on the internet. Narlene, you could come up with wonderful uh, ideas for the kids to use their imaginations and decorate. But we'll play relay races on the ball field and um, all kinds of races like tossing apples in a barrel, balancing pub, uh, pumpkins, you know, things like that. Uh, and then we could finish celebrating fall with a gigantic snake dance. Uh, just imagine the entire school, teachers and kids, hand in hand, weaving in and out and singing the school song. <coughs> Arlene, please read this for me, it is allergies. <coughs> the Winter Celebration. This sounds like a fairy tale. How will we get it here? In capital letters, snow. Rent an ice rink for the day. Rent a snowflake blower for magical effects. The music department can play Winter Wonderland or let it snow. Hot chocolate and apple cider for all. Spring. Picture a festive May pole dance with colorful flowers for decorations on the poles and on students. Hold it right there. Isn't that a pagan ritual? It's, I heard that. It was a rumor. I did some research and it was just a rumor. I danced the Maypole in summer camp. It was a very fond childhood memory. 
Hey, as long as the band doesn't play Springtime for Hitler, I'm all for it. And summer. I envision the celebration of summer to be uh, a grand finale. You know, we'll rent a playground, a swimming pool for the entire school. We can have um, outdoor crafts and water sports, uh, outdoor crafts being finger painting, and when the sun sets, we can sit in circles and sing in rounds together. And if we're lucky and it's a clear night, I'll bring my telescope and we can look at the constellations. Now, what I really want to know, and I need to ask you is this, are each one of you willing to work with me to create our own traditions? I'm there. I'm psyched. Count me in. I hate to be the voice of doom and gloom here, but what about the traditionalists? It won't be easy, but um, let's meet next Friday with your ideas on how we can make this transition a smooth one. Who knows? Maybe we'll start a new trend. Did you like it? Did you really, really like it? Please, close your eyes and click your heels three times so my dream will come true. Okay? One, two, three! Ah, fiddlesticks! Who am I kidding? It's just a fairy tale! Ah! My dancing heels to save my soul. The weary blues won't get inside my shoes because my shoes refuse to ever grow weary. Oh, I keep cheerful with an ear full of music sweet. Oh, I've got those real smart, happy, happy feet. Oh, 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 oh